if you uh, if you get invited to something where there are no rules, where there is total freedom uh, for, for everybody, do you actually want to go to that party? Welcome to this week's Wacky Moments of Leftist Extremism. The media continued its Elon Musk meltdown this week, but no meltdown was better than Ari Melber on MSNBC. But the Congress hasn't gotten around to limiting whether someone can own all of Twitter. And as we discussed in one of our special reports just last week, if you own all of Twitter or Facebook or what have you, you don't have to explain yourself. You don't even have to be transparent. You could secretly ban one party's candidate or all of its candidates all of its nominees, or you could just secretly turn down the reach of their stuff and turn up the reach of something else, and the rest of us might not even find out about it till after the election. Uh, imagine a platform like that, like the one that banned Trump and prevented the sharing of actual news on Hunter Biden's laptop right before an election. I mean, I, I, I can't imagine a social media platform doing things that nefarious, can you? The rest of us might not even find out about it till after the election. Melber is one of those people who have no sense of irony or self-awareness. I bet people like him wouldn't even want to go to a freedom party. But a broader question for Twitter, which is, if you, uh, if you get invited to something where there are no rules, where there is total freedom uh, for, for everybody, do you actually want to go to that party? Or are you going to decide to stay home? Oh boy, can I stay home with Brian Stelter instead? That sounds like a real fun time, doesn't it? Perhaps Meek and Joe Scarborough can hang out with Lil Pork Shop at home. Anthony Fauci is not going to the White House Correspondents' Dinner this weekend, but the president is. I'm not sure about the decision to have yeah. the White House Correspondents' Dinner event. I, I'm let really not. I, I don't think it's a good idea. Uh, let me just throw the baseball in the punch bowl and say <laughs> the president should not go to the event. They There's no have reason the event. why he should go to the event. The president doesn't need to go there. Not healthy, not prudent. It is mm -hmm. too soon to be having a White yes. House Correspondents Association dinner. It's too soon because everyone gets all packed in there and they're all excited to see each other. Some people have a yep. few too many drinks and it's just a mess. So they promote the idea of Biden not going, but of course the media had a meltdown when Trump chose not to attend the White House Correspondents Dinner. John, Poppy, tonight at this dinner, uh, it is a little bit more subdued because the president's not here. It's the White House List Correspondents Dinner. Everybody in the audience here has this pin, this First Amendment pin that's mm. been handed out, and President Trump needs to wear one as well. You know, we just saw him display his First Amendment rights, uh, and the tone of this dinner tonight, because celebrities mostly skip this event, because Trump told his aides not to come tonight, is about press freedom. Press freedom? First Amendment pins? Sounds like Brian was promoting a type of freedom party. If you get invited to something where there are no rules, where there is total freedom uh, for, for everybody, do you actually want to go to that party? I try to explain Brian's logic, but he's such a demented leftist activist that there is none. Most of the activists on the leftist networks, they just can't see their own insanity. A federal judge temporarily blocked the lifting of that, that Title 42, for at least the next 14 days. The administration plans to end the policy on May 23rd. That is, if the court says okay. Joining me now is NBC News correspondent Jacob Sobaroff. Jacob, you're in Washington. What have you learned today? Well, Katie, what I've learned is that both Republicans and Democrats, unfortunately, are struggling uh, with what is a myth, what is a fallacy, uh, this conversation around open borders in the United States. A myth. There, there's no illegal border crossers. I guess nobody told U.S. Customs and Border Protection since they've detained over a million already this fiscal year, but they don't exist. This allegation that the Biden administration is perpetrating open borders, it just couldn't be further from the truth. Sure, you could believe Border Patrol, but MSNBC has Jacob Soberoff, huh? Why wouldn't you believe him? Border problems just don't exist for the leftist media. It's been a month now that the news has been out that the Border Patrol agents accused of whipping Haitian migrants last September have been cleared of criminal wrongdoing. But, you know, the agents being cleared of charges must be a myth as well because the Nets still haven't reported on it, despite the fact that they showed such a high interest in that issue not long ago. Alarming images from the Texas border tonight. The White House pressed on them today, calling the images horrific. What were some Border Patrol agents doing? We witnessed cowboys with their reins again whipping black people, 
patients into the water. I can't imagine what the scenario is where that would be appropriate. It's obviously horrific, the footage. To see people treat it like they did, horses barely running them over, people being strapped, it's outrageous. I promise you those people will pay. Or be cleared. But don't expect the leftist press to update the story or question Biden for an apology, especially at ABC. They have much better things to cover. This morning, Disney Cruise Line's newest ship, the Disney Wish, prepping to set sail this summer. I wonder who ABC's parent company could possibly be. It's like in February, when Good Morning America found out the 2016 Hillary Clinton campaign was spying on her opponent, Donald Trump. Instead of giving that issue coverage, they gave us... Disney is sprinkling pixie dust in places that you may never have expected. And every time we reach a new horizon, we start to dream a little bigger and we look for new ways to tell our stories. <laughs> they certainly find non-democratic damaging stories to tell at ABC, brought to you by Crest. Contact them and ask if they can avoid sponsoring these gaping cavities of news coverage. More gaping holes in coverage this week. A bombshell report revealed that Joe Biden had agreed to pay Hunter Biden's legal fees related to his business dealings with a Chinese government-controlled company. You know, those business deals that he claims he never, ever, ever discussed with Hunter. There's not one single bit of evidence, not one little tiny bit, to suggest anything done was wrong. A stunning revelation ties the president to his son's rampant corruption, and all three nightly newscasts decided to cover up for the Biden family and ignore that story. Shh. <laughs> CNN just loves Hunter. I don't know about that headline. Hunter makes for a pretty filthy window, I think. Speaking of filthy windows, all streaming windows for the epic failure of the CNN Plus streaming service are now closed. And they closed early. Here's a look at what attempting to open streaming windows in the app looked like this week. Oh man, no daily reliable sources with Brian Stelter. I'm sure we'll all shed a tear. The broadcast version of CNN still exists, however, and it went to great length to protect Sleepy Joe after it was reported this week that the gross domestic product contracted 1.4%, a fact that's worsened by the 40-year high inflation that we currently have. CNN decided they would do a tap dance around the news. During COVID, we've had a lot of weird economic numbers, and we just got another one. Uh, the U.S. economy contracted at an annual rate of 1.4% during the first quarter. Um, this is the first contraction since the second quarter of 2020 when COVID turned the world upside down. Now, this is not that. As you can see, that was a contraction of 31%. This is a contraction of 1.4%. Uh, now, if we zoom in, we can see that, you know, clearly the economy has slowed down in the last few quarters. I think the key here is why that has happened. Um, we shouldn't panic about these numbers because... The weakness has been driven by some quirky components here. Weird numbers, quirky components, lots of uhs and mmms, but that tap dance of an excuse and ignorance is impressive, but not as impressive as MSNBC's Joy Reid and Lawrence O'Donnell's shockingly ignorant commentary this week, as they realize the U.S. is a republic and that different states have different laws. How much your tax burden is depends on where you live. Right. It depends on the state government that, that you live under. And there are states that have no income tax, there are states that have much higher sales taxes, states with higher property taxes. I guess this qualifies as news for MSNBC viewers who must have never taken a civics course. On, a, on something like abortion, mm -hmm. the notion that, well, you know, in some states you have certain rights and in other states you, have, you don't have the same rights is the kind of thing that literally defines different countries. Right. You know, that's right. why there's a Luxembourg and a Belgium. Right. Instead of, let's just put them all together. Wow, federal diktats for all in the U.S. would be so much better, huh? As long as they come from Joe Biden. <laughs> I'm Eric Scheiner for MRC TV, asking you to visit the MRC store. It's not a myth. It really exists. You can go there and purchase some great gear. Visit MRCTV.org for more information, entertainment, and videos. And be sure to like, share, and subscribe to the MRC TV videos you see on the platforms that actually let you see them. And I'll be back next week with more Media Madness.